Hello and test hello everyone. Welcome to class 12 biology. With this video, we are going to start a new chapter in your biology syllabus that is chapter number 12, biotechnology and its applications. In our previous chapter, chapter number 11, uh, biotechnology principles and processes, we discussed about various tools that are used in biotechnology and the processes that are involved in biotechnology. Right. In this chapter, we will be discussing about the applications of biotechnology. And when we talk about applications of biotechnology, biotechnology has been found useful in various fields for the welfare of human beings. For example, biotechnology has, has its applications in therapeutics, diagnostics, genetically modifying crops, processed food, bioremediation, waste treatment, energy production, etc. But we won't be discussing about all of them in this particular chapter. We will just discuss a few of them. Right. So the first application of biotechnology is in uh, its applications in agriculture. And when we talk about agriculture, one of the many challenges faced by the modern world is to feed the ever-growing human population. Right? You must have heard about this particular term called human population explosion. We are now facing the problem of human population explosion, the rapid growth of human population. Right. So, in order to feed the ever-growing human population, we need to increase our food production. Right. And in order to increase our food production, we have got few solutions that we can adopt in agriculture. And they are agrochemical-based agriculture, organic agriculture, and genetically engineered crops-based agriculture. And out of these three, if we, and we, if we talk about the first two, right, there are certain limitations mentioned in your textbook. Right. So, what are those limitations? So those limitations are the conventional breeding method. The conventional breeding method means the conventional hybridization method in which we cross two different varieties of crops and then we try to get a hybrid which can give us a better yield. Right. So the conventional breeding method or the hybridization, hybridization method has reached its limits. We, have, we no longer have enough varieties available in the wild in order to create a better hybrid. Right. So the conventional breeding method has reached its limits and for the farmers of the developing nations like ours in India, most of the farmers in, in India, they are poor, right? So to buy agrochemicals like fertilizers, uh, pesticides, weedicides, these chemicals, they are proving to be very expensive for the farmers, right? They cannot afford them. And even if the farmers, they can afford them, the chemicals, if they are used in agriculture, they are harmful to the environment. So these are the limitations regarding agrochemical-based agriculture and organic agriculture. So therefore, the third method, genetically engineered crop-based agriculture, in which we create genetically modified crops, right? those crops which can give us better yield, those crops which can uh, withstand environmental stress, they are said to be a good possible solution. Right? Genetically modified crops are one of the GMOs, short for genetically modified organisms. Genetically modified organisms are those plants, bacteria, fungi and animals whose genes have been altered artificially by the scientists within the labs right and genetically modified crops are one of them genetically modified crops they are designed to possess certain characteristics which are desirable in terms of agriculture and those desirable characteristics are uh, gm crops they are more tolerant to abiotic stresses such as temperature fluctuations prolonged drought and high concentration of salt within the soil another characteristic is gm crops they are pest resistant they are designed to be pest resistant hence we don't have to resort to the use of chemical pesticides thereby causing less harm to the environment the genetically modified crops are also less prone to post harvest losses which means these crops they have got higher shelf life they are designed to have higher shelf life right they can they will stay fresh for longer periods of time and these genetically modified crops are also efficient in mineral usage thereby uh, the, the soil can retain its fertility for longer periods of time. We don't have to use uh, fertilizers right? because these genetically modified crops, they are made efficient in mineral usage. And lastly, these genetically modified crops are with enhanced nutritional value. Right? They are designed to have enhanced nutritional value. For example, uh, golden rice, which is one of the genetically modified crops, they, have, they are vitamin A enriched rice. Right. If you compare a golden rice with the normal rice, the golden rice will have higher amount of vitamin A. Right. Why? Because they are genetically engineered to have higher content of vitamin A in it. So these are some of the important characteristics of genetically modified crops. 
right but in this particular chapter we will be discussing mostly about gm crops that are pest resistant so one of the genetically modified pest resistant plant is bt cotton how is bt cotton produced bt cotton is produced by isolating bt toxin gene from a bacteria and incorporating it into the uh, cotton plant right so we need to understand what is bt toxin first bt toxins are insecticidal protein crystals produced by a specific bacteria called bacillus thuringiensis right so bacillus thuringiensis is uh, called bt in short in this diagram of bacillus thuringiensis you can see the bt toxin crystal over here this bt toxin crystal is produced by a bacterial gene called as cry gene the bt toxin gene is called as cry gene scientists they isolate this particular gene from the bacteria and incorporate into the crop plants such as cotton plant and thereby making this cotton plant capable of producing bt toxin on its own and when these insect caterpillars they try to eat such cotton they will die because the bt toxins they are insecticidal protein crystals now there is one important question given in your textbook which might be asked in your examination as well it asks why does why doesn't this pt toxin crystal kill the bacteria why does it kill only the uh, caterpillar right that is because the bt toxin protein they are called as protoxin they are not toxin yet they requires activation the activation of bt toxin happens within the insect gut due to the alkaline nature of the insect's gut environment when when the bt toxin protein is activated the active protein it causes the cells of the epithelium of the gut epithelium of the insect to swell and lyse thereby killing the insect right so you have to remember this particular answer and this diagram illustrates the entire process over here we have bacillus thuringiensis which can synthesize or which can produce bt toxins scientists they isolate the bt toxin gene from the bacteria and incorporate them into the crop plants thereby transforming the crop plants and making them capable of producing bt toxins right now uh, when these uh, genetically transformed crop plants get attacked by their pest insect larvae the insect larvae they end up consuming the bt toxin crystals produced by these crop plants and the bt toxin crystals they enter into the gut of the insect larvae and becomes activated due to the alkaline environment right now when the activated uh, bt toxin they go and bind to the insect midgut cells the insect midgut cells undergo lysis and cell death and due to that the larvae dies of septicemia right so that is how the bt toxin works within the insect gut now it is important for us to remember that most bt toxins are insect group specific which means some bt toxins they can kill only lepidopterans which means they can kill only butterflies and moths some bt toxins they can kill only coleopterans which means they can kill only beetles and some bt toxins they can kill only dipterans which means they can kill only flies and mosquitoes Right. by keeping this important property of bt toxins in mind scientists they have isolated different bt toxin genes from bacteria and inserted them into host plant thereby making host plant specifically resistant to specific uh, insect pests for example scientists they have isolated cry 1ac and cry 2ab genes from the bacteria and inserted them into cotton plant thereby making the cotton plant resistant to cotton ball worms uh, cotton ball worms are the worms belonging to lepidopteran group and scientists they have also isolated cry 1ab gene from the bacteria and inserted them into corn plants thereby making the corn plant resistant to cotton borers which are uh, coleopterans right so the bt toxin genes and their insect group specificity is one very important property which is useful in creating uh, genetically modified crops resistant to specific insect groups thereby killing only the specific uh, pest insect and not other insects Now next is the use of RNA interference process to create nematode resistant tobacco plants. Nematodes, you all know they are roundworms. Some roundworms, they are plant parasites. Right? Roundworm infestation of crop plants can cause significant reduction in the yield of those crops, especially tobacco plants. And nematode infestation of tobacco plants can incur huge financial loss to the tobacco farmers and therefore rna interference process is used to create nematode resistant tobacco plants to help such farmers right now what do we mean by rna interference rna interference is defined 
as a biological process in which RNA molecules inhibit gene expression or translation by neutralizing targeted mRNA molecules. In other words, a particular mRNA molecule is targeted by use of a complementary double-stranded RNA molecule. The double-stranded RNA molecule will bind with the mRNA molecule, thereby preventing the mRNA molecule to be translated. Right. So that is RNA interference. So the RNA is interfering in the translation process of the mRNA. Right. So it is one of the gene regulation methods found in various cells. I told you about gene regulation methods before. Right. So this is one of the gene regulation methods found in various cells and it also forms a method of cellular defense against pathogen among eukaryotic organisms. Now there is a particular nematode parasite called Milardogen incognitia which can infect the roots of tobacco plants and drastically reduce its yield. So you can see the difference between an infected root and uninfected root in this particular picture. Right. So the name of the parasite is important over here. The name of the parasite, the nematode parasite is Milardogen incognitia. It can infect the roots of tobacco plants thereby reducing the yield of the tobacco plant and causing huge financial loss to the tobacco farmers. Right. And the solution to this particular problem is to introduce nematode specific genes into host plant by using agrobacterium vectors. I told you about the plasmids of agrobacterium tumefacens which can be used as vectors to introduce foreign genes into the host plant. Right. So in this particular case, uh, we introduce nematode specific genes into the host plant by using agrobacterium vectors. And this introduced gene within the host plant will start producing a double stranded RNA molecule which carries out the RNA interference process. Right? I told you this double stranded RNA molecule will be complementary to the mRNA molecule and this double stranded RNA molecule will bind to the mRNA molecule thereby preventing the RNA molecule to translate into a protein. Right? So same thing will happen over here. The introduced gene the introduced nematode specific genes will now produce a double stranded RNA molecule which carries out the RNA interference process. The RNA interference process will be carried out to silence a specific mRNA of the nematode uh, parasite which hinders the growth of the nematode within the host plant thereby making the host plant resistant to the nematode. Right. So this is the use of uh, RNA interference process in creating a, a nematode resistant tobacco plant. If you are interested to know more about the RNA interference process, I strongly advise you to watch this particular video over here. I have given you a YouTube link of a video in which they explain the RNA interference process. Right? It will be very interesting for you as well. Right? Now in the next video we will be discussing about the applications of biotechnology in medicine. So please read about the applications of biotechnology in medicine in your textbook and you can watch the next video. Thank you.